like what's the matter? They, well, we, we Chris saw on social media that they the rim at the TD Garden was two inches taller than it should have been. Funny business going on. Well, chicanery. What do you mean? On the Warriors, the, like so, side yeah. So on the side where the Warriors are warming up, the basket was like the the, the rim was two inches taller or two inches higher off the ground than ten feet two than, than regulation. There was some chicanery. During the game as well, though. No, no, no. During warmups, they, they, during warmups. So, like they, if, if the Warriors, so they were shooting, they, they they were warming up on a basket that was ten feet two inches, and, and then played on a basket that was ten feet. Right. Imagine being that good that you'd notice two inches. Uh, would you notice two inches? <laughs> Not right. on a basketball hoop. Hey, you. Okay. I think Smitty just witnessed two inches. That's, oh goodness oh me! God. Goodness me! That's a oh, that's a good joke. My God! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> If I'm lucky on a good day. <laughs> Too much. Sorry. I believe in cynical right, we'll, parlance. They say supercharge that. Um, um we can start with the te- we can start with the two inches. Okay. Hmm. Are you guys accusing the Celtics of of cheating? Is that what you're doing? I mean. There is certainly some chicanery. I thought Steve Kerr had a really funny line after the game. He goes, thankfully, the game started at midnight, so we had plenty of time to fix the problem. Um, but, but, but yeah, there was certain chicanery at foot. There was a basket that was two inches taller than it should have been. And it just makes me think, did the Heat players not notice that? Has wow. That, has that rim been that tall since oh. game six of the Eastern Finals? Well, I think for real chicanery, they would have to come out at halftime yeah. and like lower it for the Celtics, right? Mm. I mean, this is... Yeah, because they're both going to end up shooting. That's, yeah. what, that's what I was thinking. It doesn't behoove them to also have mm. to shoot on that rim. Yeah. Or but I think it- what Whittingham is saying here is that, that Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, they're such skilled shooters that they know when they're shooting, even if it's just two inches taller than it normally should be, that they notice, and perhaps the Celtics, who aren't nearly as good, well, they're pretty good from three, but they're not nearly, they're not the, you know, they're not the assassins that Steph Curry and Clay Thompson are. And so perhaps they would notice. It's not something I would notice. If I was shooting on a basket that was 10 feet, two inches, I would not notice that. You guys think you would notice that? I, no, I, think I it, certainly would not. Right. Well, I mean, if you had the trained eye of an NBA player, like, this doesn't seem right. I, I maybe, but no, I think like me now. No, I, I would never notice that. Like that would be like if in soccer, like if Messi was like that goal is three inches too wide, like that'd be ridiculous. Right. Like they, and, and like the referees always go out and like measure them. Oh, They're really? like, they go out and be like, all right, that's all right. That's all right. Um, but they're just going through the motions with that. At this point, Yeah, right? no, they're sure. not actually yeah. like they're like, eh, rah, 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 it looks good. But yeah, wait, Chris, are you saying that that is something that Lionel Messi would notice if the goal was three inches wider than it normally was? Like, I think he almost I don't think he would notice that. No, I think he would. Really? I, I agree with Chris. Get I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we comprehend just how familiar professional athletes are with the tools that they use uh, or like or the or the dimensions of what's going on around them. Like Ray Allen backpedals to a precise section of the corner where he knows that his right. feet are behind the three-point line but not on the out-of-bounds line without even looking at Max it. Max like- Struess cannot do that. <laughs> right. No, you're right. I mean, the greatest shot in NBA history in a big in a big spot, a big moment, the greatest shot in NBA history that I missed, by the way, because I was trying to get out of there early. I, mi- um, I, missed, I missed, by the way, too. It was my I missed it because I was annoyed that I was sitting next to a Spurs, a Spurs fan and I didn't want to see right. him celebrate the championship. So I left early. That's very funny. But those guys are so precise. Have, has that happened to either of you, Smitty or Chris? So Whittingham, both Whittingham and I both have examples where we left a big time sporting event early and missed an all time moment. I missed the Ray Allen shot and everything that happened after the Ray Allen shot. Which was overtime, I believe, right? Winning him, I think no, it no, went it was, to overtime. It was, it was, it was, it, yeah, it eventually did go to overtime. Yes. Yeah, so you right that game went to overtime, right? As well. Yeah, I missed Ray Allen saying, "Get those ropes out of here." I missed the whole yeah. thing. I mean, so I was I actually, listen. I was walking out to my car, and everyone else decided to start walking back in. And I told them one by one, "You're not getting back in. The Heat are letting you back in. You missed history. We miss history. Let's all <laughs> sink and drown in it together. It never, it never get in our fucking cars and go home and get Very home early. You people. Know? Like you were part of them, but you're like, hey, you ain't." You missed it, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'll, I no because here's what happened. When I walked out of that game, everyone's walking with me. They're thinking what I'm thinking. The series is over. The blueprint is over. The yeah. game is over. They're walking out to their cars. They want to get home early. 
And then you heard the roar of the crowd and everyone reversed course and started going against the grain that I was going with. And one by one, I told them, hey, you ain't getting back in. Hey, you ain't getting back. I was like mocking them for doing the exact same thing they did. I said, we missed it. You ain't getting back in. And they all tried to get back in and never got back in. Uh, never, I was home early. Happened to me, you know? <laughs> my, my grandpa did leave the Steelers game early where the immaculate reception occurred. He saw it from the concourse. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It happened. I, I, I know we don't like to go down luck. this thing. I believe in this type of shit. I'm very superstitious. You believe in the butterfly. Effect. I just think, yes, I do. I think huh. that if one person happened to not be at that arena that night, something, it just turned like, who, like, I know, like, everyone's looking at me like I'm kind of, I just believe no, in that shit. I think that's an interesting superstition. Wait. Yeah, well, so do I. But Chris, you're making me feel better about what it is I did and Whittingham for that matter. You're right. saying if you're we stay glued to our seats, Ray Allen doesn't hit the shot. So I help I help the Heat win that game. I have there's, no way I can I mean. prove, there's no way I can prove the opposite of it. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, it, you always have that on your side. Hmm. It's because of you, uh, Stu Gatz, that Ray Allen did that. Wait. Well, you're welcome. Uh, Smeddy, does uh, does your grandfather have any regret? Any sort of regret? Like, that's a pretty well, big I moment think, to miss in sports history. I think he's I think he was in the stands like he was a season ticket holder. This was in the 70s. Right. So I think he was in the stands and then the Steelers were losing and he was like, ah, there's no no chance they're going to come back. So he started leaving. And then I think he was like in the concourse and saw it from the concourse, but not from like inside the stadium. I don't really remember the lore of it, though, because my grandpa died. But hmm. There was there was some some situation where he left the immaculate reception game early and he always talked about it. Big Steelers guy. Right. Uh, I did. I, I tried to make up for my mistake by staying through game seven Eastern Conference finals. I saw the shot that Jimmy Butler took and he missed. OK, so, Cody, what do we do there? Did yeah. I have left? <laughs> Well, like, what if you had what if you had something on in the stands that distracted you know the shooter and that was why they either made the shot or missed yeah. the shot right mm -hmm. it's the butterfly so you, right, you, and we'll never give yourself a, you can't give yourself a pat on the back for staying through a, a basketball game to the to its conclusion a one-point game if it's late you can it was a, was a Sunday I mean, I'm, night but i'm patting myself on the back for leaving a game so why can't That's i pat? i mean i think you can right? pat yourself on the back for almost anything these days hmm. right I actually I made amends after leaving uh, the heat game or the or my seat. So I ended up going down because I was covering the game and I went down. I saw George Sedano in the bathroom ah, and I was Sedano. like, oh, man, game, the season's over. This is this is terrible. He goes, no, it's a three point game. I'm like, what? And so I ran to a television. There was no television that was live. There was one guy who had a live feed of the game, like like the the play by play. It was some I, I, don't, I forget who. And it, and it just said. R dash Allen or P three PT nine, nine, 95, 95. And then as that was coming through on the screen, you heard the roar from the arena. And I will say that I, I went from where I was in that media staging area. And I kind of ran towards an entrance to the court. I don't even know if I was allowed to right. be there, but I just kind of ran there. And when he said, get those effing ropes out of here, I saw the people with the effing ropes running back into the arena with the effing ropes. And also the, the way that they do the trophy presentation at a finals game is they have like a stage that is a, that is a bunch of parts that they then put together on the court yeah. and all of the arena workers were stood in the tunnel getting ready to run out those arena parts. And there was a very excited manager that went, take them all back. <laughs> and I got to see a <laughs> horde of people rush out with the stage parts and everyone was like cheering and so excited because they worked for, for the American Airlines arena. And uh, and so at least like I got to I made up for it by seeing that shot from a different perspective. <laughs> All right, uh, Cody, I, I noticed two I things there. I, I, I love that he's convinced right. himself that that was like, yeah, and it, it, it was it, worth it. It was <laughs> worth like, it. Yeah, this. totally worth it to miss uh, the greatest oh, moment in Max. Miami sports history. No, but I noticed two things as Whittingham was telling that story. One, Chris Cody patted him on the back like he was trying to make him feel better. What was that all about? Was like, I was like, what's that? Sitting everywhere? Someone referenced uh, this literal siddle. Someone right here. referenced a pat on the back, and I thought we don't do that as much as we used to anymore. So I want to give him a pat on the back. You on the back. Yeah, let me get one. Oh, it's nice. You're right. What happened to the pat on the back? You're right. The other thing I noticed is what was the need to just blurt out Sedano? <laughs> well, I just love like just a yeah. name drop. Yeah, like, just a, a solid in a, arena, in game name drop. Solid person. 
person who's right. going to be there no matter what. It's part of the scene. So is that the rule, Chris? Whenever someone says they've seen like Sedano or anyone in an arena, you have to do, ah, Sedano. Is that how it works? I was walking by and Pablo Torre was there. It's like, oh, nice. Yeah. It's just a good name. Love a good name. Yeah. David, David. Pablo Aldridge Torre was, was in out. town? <laughs> no, no, I feel like it would be like a good name would be like David Aldridge. Ah, just, like a, just like a ah, stable of NBA media. I heard Amin El Hassan get name drop on like the Ringer, uh, the Ringer basketball show. Oh, they were like, huh. me. Yeah, they were like, yeah, Amin El Hassan was there. And I was like, oh, name, it was like a Sedano. Like no yeah, Amin is definitely part of the scenery at any major NBA yeah. event for sure. He's, he's definitely yeah. entered that pantheon.